Amen. Amen. His kingdom. You know, you can, every move of God, if you go back and study history, it's about even the Zuzu Street revivals. Later on in the, in the time, they tried to organize it. There's one thing about it, God refuses for us to organize his kingdom. You can organize, but he'll slowly leave. Now he, he, he helped folks for a while. But how many knows it, it won't remain if God would have left his move in religion, then we'd be in a mess tonight. But even the Zuzu Street, after God moved like he did, and that's why God ain't going to send it to the big main line the nominal churches or religious churches. You know, everyone, you got some independent as just the religious as the Baptist or the Catholic. And later on, they gave up the move of God to put a claim on him. God has never allowed no man to put a claim on what he paid for. See, I didn't buy the kingdom, and you didn't either. Amen. I didn't buy souls, and you didn't either. Amen. Jesus, Paul said, we're bought with a price. Amen. And that price is the precious blood of a lamb. See, we need to go back. It does us good to study and to learn from other folks' mistakes. I want you to know there ain't going to be another circle for us. If we don't get it now, there ain't going to be another circle. God's going to raise up another generation. But even the Zuzu Street, later on, from 1900, as the revival broke out in Topeka, Kansas, came on to Galveston, Houston, and the uh, Los Angeles, California started in the house moved to a Baptist woman's house you know God just does things to break it out of the norm see what they did they locked it out and padlocked the churches and kicked it out but later on when when God started moving they all wanted to act like they put a claim on it but how many knows that God ain't going to let religion put a claim on the Holy Ghost? And that's why we're where we are tonight. Now you can come out of, and that's where most of us come from. We come out of religion. We come out of this church and that church. Some was born into this, but a lot of them, a lot of us, I came from the Baptist, from the free holiness, and moved on to the assembly of God and passed it there. But I never was satisfied. And brought, God brought me into the Jesus ministry. And the ones that love me When I came into the Jesus ministry, he revealed the name of Jesus and the baptism of Jesus' name and, and water, and doing everything in word and deed in the name of Jesus. All them folks dropped me like a hot potato. Amen. But after 1906 and 7, and how God moved three solid years in Azusa Street. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, folks got the Holy Ghost. Got saved and all types of signs and wonders and miracles, biblical miracles. And it died down and they began to argue over some doctrines. 
and the power of God just started and God raised up another man named Brother Durham and he came and God was using him he came back to Zusa Street and God fired it up again but in every major revival man tries to put a rope around it put a fence around it put their name on it and put a claim on it and you know what it does it dies it dies the move of God dies when people try to fence God up see once you put him in the fence you rule him then you go by rules and regulations when, the, when, when we've already got all the rules and regulations we need from Genesis to Revelation. But you have one religious sect would take a few scriptures and put a fence around it and another would take a few and everybody's right, see. But he said eat the whole book. You know, we don't, we don't just need the Baptist doctrine, the Assembly of God doctrine, Church of God doctrine, AOH doctrine. We need the whole book. Amen. You know where this ministry started? In 67, when Jesus appeared to Brother Terrell and said, Behold the Lamb of God. See, people had denominationalized. They had took their eyes off of Jesus and now I'm Baptist. I'm simply God. Bless God, I'm church of God from my head to my feet. I'm this and I'm that. But Jesus had took the back seat. They had shoved him in the back. And when you shove Jesus in the back, real Holy Ghost power dies out. God will not and cannot allow us to put a fence around part of his word, put a name on it. Even men put their name on it. Jones Chapel and uh, Smith's Organization Incorporated. I must have hit something. But I'm going to move on. God ain't going to allow us to take part of this. See, as long as Azusa Street was just wide open in the Holy Ghost, they had no song leader. They had no music. They had nobody in charge. Really, Brother Seymour. But yet he, a lot of times he had two big old shoe boxes on the platform. And a lot of, most of the time, a lot of time he stayed hid behind them shoe boxes and never came out. He gave place to the Holy Ghost. See, we've learned. We've learned how to have church. And you die under that philosophy. You remember what those saying used to be? How was the service last night? The Holy Ghost took over. The Holy Ghost took over. Nobody got to preach. And, and I'm not saying every service is going to be like that unless God wants it like that. I can't tell you what God wants to do tonight. I don't know more, no more than you do. Because I don't depend on sermons. I depend on the Holy Ghost. My preparation is reading and praying and reaching out to God. I'm not saying it's wrong to write it out, or, but I don't write out sermons. What we need in this hour is the word of the Lord. We need the word of a God's altar. We need to hear from heaven. We're in too critical time not to know where we are. 
We're in too dark of an hour not to know where we are. And there's one thing about it. When God's leading and God's in charge, you really don't know what he's going to do. You may feel in about the way, but most of the time when you feel like you've got it about wrapped up, he'll go, whoo, you're on the way. Where are we going, Lord? But I've learned when he starts speaking, don't try to go back to no sermon. You better go on with God. Don't you wind up your tongue tied. You may not even know where he's going, but you know the Spirit is leading, and when the Holy Ghost is leading, you're going in the right direction. I'm not talking about a bunch of wild stuff and wildfire. I'm talking about Holy Ghost fire. I'm talking about being led by the Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost taking over. I'm talking about God leading in everything we do. In everything we say. But after God moved, it's, it's like reading on there, you can see in the history of it, that they actually sold out that move of God to try to wrap it up and keep it. God don't want us to keep it. He sends revival to the world. He don't want us to put some kind of claim to make us important and to make us have pride and lift our shoulders and, and say, look at me. I saw so much of that, it made me sick to my stomach. Pride. And it's the same, if it's here, if it's in what we call this ministry, if religious pride is in it, it's the same thing as over yonder in the Pentecostal. How many of those, you can come out all of the religions and come right over and build a fence over here and have a same religious spirit that you left out of with just a different doctrine. Yeah. Brother, the spirit is what it is. The spirit that you are. And we'll never see the glory and the power of God. That's why he has to let a generation die out. Because it won't bend and change. And my, I'm done bent. I just want to be a part of it. I ain't bound up with no man doctrine. I'm not bound up with nothing but the word of God. With the Holy Ghost. Yes, we have leadership. Yes, we have the ministries. And I promise you, the people has got the Holy Ghost is going to recognize the real Holy Ghost is going to recognize the real ministry that's in somebody. You ain't got to go around and put a, a sign on your chest. You ain't got to go around and, and get you a title. God gives you the title. I saw young preachers start out and I've taught them strict I said don't you go out here first thing you do get your title get you some cards printed up you apostle so and so and prophet so and so and you ain't even qualified to lead a prayer meeting God showed it to me like this. It's like a book. You got a wonderful title. But you start opening a book and every page is empty. You try to live up to a title. What? See, people expect to, for you to be what you say you are. So I tell folks I'm nothing. So whatever I do is a plus. Tell everybody I'm a nobody. I'm a sinner saved by grace and whatever way God wants to use me to God be the glory. I'm not stuck with a title. 
I believe in titles. God do have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yes, I know this. But you make sure it's God-given. Many people have backslid trying to live up to a title they gave themselves. Somebody walked out there claiming they were prophesying to them and gave them a title and they reached out there and tried to live up to it and backslid because it wasn't what somebody prophesied to them. Let me tell you, in this hour, prophecy is cheap. I'm not talking about the gift of prophecy. I'm talking about all this old prophecy. Yeah, thus says the Lord, 98% of it ain't even God anymore. <laughs> Try to listen to folks. When I started out, you know, they, 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 some of the folks just love to prophesy. They catch somebody that got anointing on him. And they want to ride with him. And they pull him aside or call him up and prophesy to him. They know he's anointed. They got enough knowledge to know he's got an anointing. He's on fire. And they want to be the one to say, I told you. They know he's going in the direction. They just want to have the the name of sin. I prophesied to him. I'm the one that did it. Let me tell you, that kind of spirit ain't God. That's you. That's flesh. People gather up in houses, prophesy to each other, claim to have prayer meetings in their homes, and all they do is prophesy to each other. Yeah, I said to you, no, yeah, I said to you. <laughs> Nothing ever comes out of it but discouragement. Yeah. But it's time to go back to the original. And the original was, he said, go, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but carry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power to be a witness unto me, both in Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the land. That's original. You know, if you want a, if you want a clear copy, you got to always have a master copy. Because every time you copy a copy off of a copy, it fades. And it won't be long until, see that's what people have done, they copied men instead of copying Jesus. When your eyes is on flesh and still of Jesus, you copying from a copy. And every time you copy from a copy, it fades. And, and, and a few copies down, you can't even read it anymore. Amen. It's faded. The power is faded. The wisdom is faded. The anointing is faded. But when you want a clear copy, you go back to that folder and you get that master. And every time you make a copy, it'll be a clear copy. That's why we must preach Jesus. That's why we must preach the original, which is the book of Acts. They carried, they waited, and everybody since then that had a revival, it was born through prayer. They were but after all that power, instead of going back, if they had to, go back to that house, go back to somebody's house, start over. That's where it started. But they kept going and going until they 
it started fading and they started organizing and when they organized tried to organize it it faded out and God revived it again and then they started trying to organize it again The Assembly of God came out of that. And UPC come out of that. The nominations sprung out of that move. They organized it. God moved for a while. But when you want the original, when you want an outpouring the Holy Ghost and then in the 40s again, Brother Branham got hungry. Went to a cabin and waited on God and fasted and the angel appeared to him. Gave him a ministry. Six weeks time he was, he was packing out the biggest auditoriums. And they was coming from other, flying in from other countries because I heard that an angel had visited a man. But you know what happened to that? They started organizing it. Start putting man's stamp on it. And then stay with prayer and stay with the Holy Ghost and let God keep the reins. Yeah. And hold it between the lines. I mean, it was the Holy Ghost is the only thing that's got the ability to hold revival between the lines. Yeah. And to hold the church between the lines. And God raised up this ministry, what we call this ministry. And oh, what a mighty move. What a mighty move. And I begin to see as a young man pride in the preachers. They wouldn't even speak to you. If you wanted a name brand preacher, had a certain name, they wouldn't even speak to you. They had them classified as big preachers and little preachers. I don't find that in the Bible. I find where well, there's apostles. And I know we all have our ministry. We're all in our place. But we don't put nobody down. We don't look down on nobody. Paul taught in the Bible that he said, he said in the church, he fixed it where there wouldn't be no schisms or isms. The ones that don't say much, you depend on them more. They're the backbone of the church. The ones that don't speak much, that don't say much, you depend on them the more. God fixed it where everybody was important. And that's the only way you can stay afloat when you don't follow God and follow the teachings of Paul, follow the teachings of Jesus, follow the teachings of the Holy Ghost. The church won't stay afloat. It'll begin to sink. It'll begin to lose its glory. It'll begin to lose its power. The Spirit of God will begin to vacate the churches. They begin to die out. They're like that revival in the 40s. There was over 200 preachers raised up. But after they begin to organize it, it begin to die out. It begin to die out. See what, what a lot of people did in their hearts if they didn't speak it out you probably wouldn't get them to admit it but what they did they came out of organizations they came out of every walk of religion came right over built a fence around what we call this ministry and a religious spirit took it over and you know what happens just like it did in the 40s under Branham just like it did under Brother Seymour it starts dying out. When Jesus ain't foremost and the Holy Ghost ain't leading, it ain't going nowhere. Now you may not want to admit it that things has died out, but I, I, it's died out.
That glory ain't there like it used to be. I'm not putting nobody down. I'm not blaming nobody. I'm blaming us all. It so ain't Jesus. It's us. We're the fault. We're the fault. We're the reason. It ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost leaves when you quit letting the Holy Ghost be in charge. When you quit letting the Holy Ghost lead. The power of God, the gifts of God begins to move out. Nobody loves what God has done for him through this ministry and work. No more than I do, I don't believe. But I tell you what I know when it ain't. I know when it is. I got enough sense. I may not know how to fly a jet. But I know the Holy Ghost when it's moving. And I know the Holy Ghost when it ain't. See, what you do, you get just like the Baptist. You get just like the assembly of God is now. They learn how to have church. They can have church whether God shows up or not. But you know what they used to do? If God didn't show up, they'd stop in the middle of the song service and say, come to the altar. Something ain't right here. Something ain't right. Something is wrong. Come to the altar. They may spend the rest of the evening in the altars and still are trying to sing without the Holy Ghost, worship without the Holy Ghost, and preach without the Holy Ghost. They first would get it right. And once they got it right, thank God the Spirit of God would return. See, some of us is just about like the Baptist. Some of them told me I was born Baptist. Bless God, and I'll die Baptist. I said, well, I was born in the Baptist. But I'm going to die in Jesus. I was raised in the Baptist. But I'm going to die. I'm going to finish this thing in Jesus. So what happened from the from that time, then the forties? Each time God, Brother Branham, I think they said it had about 35 members, he got disgusted. A Baptist preacher got disgusted with dead religion, dead church, and he walked away from it, went to a cabin, and saw God. And when God raised up at revival, he didn't allow him to take it on to denominations. He brought it out. He brought it out of that spirit. See, you, you can gather out of the Baptist, of the AOH, of the Church of God, and you can come over here and you start taking pride in what you do. You do the same thing that the Baptist did. You build a fence around it. And you take pride in it. In it. And not Jesus. When you get your eyes off of Jesus, you are going to sink and you are going to die. When you cease to preach the word of God in its full context, the people is going to be shortchanged. They're not going to be able to go through trials. They're not going to be able to get healed when they're sick. They're dying with diseases. I remember the time folks wasn't even sick. Let on dying. But when the, when, when the revival spirit fades away, when the power of God fades away, folks start dying like flies. But as long as that power and glory is there, the devil can't enter the camp. Yeah. Satan is forbidden. Satan is forbidden to enter the camp. I'm not putting nobody down. I'm lifting somebody up and his name is Jesus. He's the one. And if you want to go on with God, you got to turn a loose religion. If you don't, you hear me, you're going to die in the wilderness. You're going to make another circle and you're going to die. Oh,
over here in this old circle waiting on God just to move for us. God ain't just interested in us. He's interested in the whole world. said he's interested in the world he said for God so loved the world and he gave his only answer God is fixing and you know what if we don't just like I said we'll finish dying out and God will go out to the streets like he did at Zulu Street and get a new crop he went outside the churches he left the churches don't you think you can put handcuffs on God and make him? Well, God promised us. Yeah, but you're supposed to be doing some stuff too. Yeah. It ain't just left up to God. It's left up to you too. God's done done his. He's done finished his. It's time for us to finish ours. Return to God. Return to holiness. Return to the altar. Return to fasting. Return to the word. Hallelujah. It died out. That great revival that shook the world. People came all the way from China. They rode boats from China. They heard that the Holy Ghost was being poured out in Los Angeles, California. See, the church is padlocked. See, when you don't rise and hear God's word, you know, Peter spoke about the truth, but he also spoke about the present truth. There's a truth and there's a present truth. And that's the truth for tonight. God knows where we are. He knows where we are at tonight. And we have got to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If you've got that attitude, I was born in it and I'm going to die in it. You're going to die. You're going to circle and you're going to die. And God's going to raise up your children that ain't going to listen. And they're going to go in. Three and a half million people came out of Egypt. They saw the hand of God. They saw the move of God. Some of you, some of your greatest blockage some of you in your mind your greatest hold back you don't even realize it it's a religious spirit there's one thing about God if you ain't moving you're stagnated a stream that ain't moving collects bacteria Tadpoles. Tadpoles won't swim in that running because every you can have a dead dog and every so many feet that running water purifies itself. That's why we got to keep it running. Especially back in the years ago, a piece of land was valuable when they called it a live stream. They're trying to sell a piece of property and they say it's got a live stream. That would move you quick. Because that means you'd always have water in the times of drought. Oh, hallelujah. How many knows? In this, there's a live stream. If you follow this, there's always a miracle. There's always joy. There's always faith. It's the living. This word lives. It's Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. You have no life in you. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. 
you have no life. There's one thing about God's word. It moves you. See, that's what happened to the children of Israel. God brought them out of Egypt. He didn't bring them out of Egypt for them to die in the wilderness. His promise was, I'll bring you out after 400 years. I'll bring you out and I'll judge the nation that had you in captivity. And I'll take you into the land flowing with milk and honey. That was the will of God. But not every time God's will gets done among folks when you start doubting and circling the wagons and making a religion and start saying, we're the only ones. We're the only ones, God. You know what? Right now in China, they're having revival in China. They're, raising, they're rising up at 4.30 in the morning having church because they got to hide. They're shouting and speaking in tongues and getting the Holy Ghost and getting saved at 4.30 in the morning. While most of God's people ain't even turned over. They're receiving the Holy Ghost. Why? 4.30 don't mean nothing. They're hungry. Oh, if we don't return to the hunger of God, they'll have revival. When I believe... There's a remnant. There's a remnant in this nation. There's a few that still want revival. That still believes. Hallelujah. The promise that there's coming revival. That's coming an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's coming an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. God said. I said, God said, that's coming an outpouring. You know, God's word is God's word. If God speaks through someone by the Holy Ghost, it's just as much God's word as this is. If it's God, it's God. Men spoke this. It was written. Now, everything we speak now is written, but most of it's put on tape and CDs. And you go back and listen to it again. You feel that Holy Ghost all over again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just like when you read this. Yeah. Yeah. You feel the power of it. You feel the realness. And if we want a real revival, we've got to go back to the original. And the original is the book of Acts. And that's what they preached at Azusa Street. And that's what they preached in the 40s. And that's what preached in the 70s. And the How Real Revival, we're going to preach it again in 2015. Amen. It's always, the, if you want a clear copy, if you want an original revival, you've got to go back and preach the original revival. You've got to go back to the book of Acts. Yes. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all in one place, one mind, one accord. There come a sound from heaven like as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They appeared under them clothed in tongues like as a fire. They came out of the upper room staggering like drunk men. And the people saw them staggering. I'm sure they thought, oh, I thought y'all was up there praying. You've been up there drinking. Peter stood up and said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. He didn't say they weren't drunk. They was drunk. These men are not drunk as you suppose. But this one was prophesied by the prophet Joel. In the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams upon my handmaids and my servants. I will pour out of my spirit of those days and they shall prophesy. Amen. Just before the sun turns dark and the moon drips blood. Yes. I believe it. There's a revival in the hand. Amen. Something is being born. Amen. But you know it's up to us to be a part of it. To be a part of what God's doing in the new and the fresh, you got to empty out. He said, if my people shall call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn. 
from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. And I'll heal the land. Thank you, Jesus. There's something being born. But I want you to know, they ain't one of us got the monopoly on it. They ain't one of us got the control of it. This is going to be a Holy Ghost revival. You know, God's told us for years that this is going to be a Holy Ghost revival that the flesh ain't going to get in it. Well, see, flesh got in all the rest of them is what I'm preaching about. Flesh got in them and denominized and put the names on them. That's what they'd have done in the Susan Street at first. If he'd have turned it over. In fact, one time he even went up to the one of the big churches because they didn't have much room, a little 20 by 20 building, Susan Street. They went up there and I believe stayed three days and nothing happened, so they had to come back to where God was. It didn't take them long that God wasn't up there. There was something that man wanted. It wasn't what God's will was. Hallelujah! I said hallelujah! Let me tell you, God's going to lead this thing. We've got to put our eyes above a man's head and get our eyes on Jesus. Look to him. Return to me, he said, and I'll return to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The church ain't going to fail. I done read the end of the book. The church won. They overcame by the blood of a lamb and the word of their testimony. They love not their lives unto the death. I'm not trying to pull nobody's plug and, and then I guess I am. But my message is put your eyes back on Jesus. Just like it was when this ministry started. Behold the Lamb of God. See that's what he was doing then. Because they had denominized every other move and things had died out. The churches had died. The move of God had died. Just like it has now. Yeah, we're, we're still having... God is still moving for people that are praying, but I'm talking about major the revival, the shaking whole cities and, and kingdoms. We know we're not seeing it like we read it in the book of Acts, the original. Even though God is moving, there ain't no shortage in God. You can believe all things are possible. But yet we're not seeing miracles like they saw on the Allen and Branham and he moaning six to seven, seven to seven, one, two, three, and time brother God uh, visited Brother Terrell. We're not seeing that anymore. That glory has died out. That's not putting nobody down. It died out under Branham. It died out under Brother Seymour. There ain't but one way to get it back. That's to come back to the altar and pray and empty out. God is going to pull out the revival on somebody. You know in the Susan Street, it was time for God to send revival. It was God and just like it was then. It's time now again. We've got to have revival and we've got to have it now. Don't this nation is going to crumble. It's dying from within. I said it's dying, the sodomite spirit. Yeah. It just popped up on my wife's cell phone this evening, someone we knew. Dearly, a beautiful young lady popped on that. She had her hair cut like a man. She just married another woman. It's so sad. And our government. Our president, our congressman, TV personalities, Hollywood, all of them is promoting it and saying it's all right. That, 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 that NFL draftee, I saw him in Fox News. They had him there and he, the first homosexual ever been drafted into the NFL. 
big old young man. I didn't know what I was looking at. I just saw, and he's waiting on us. I said, well, another young man waiting on his call. And he's waiting there. And he's waiting on his call. He got his call. He threw that phone down, grabbed a little old pale boy like that. Grabbed him, lifted his feet up off the ground and kissed him right in the mouth. I said, oh my God. My God. Right on national TV. And people saying, that's all right. That's nice. I'm, I'm proud of you. And God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. These old political correct preachers preaching this twisted grace message is turning all the sins are loose on the face of the earth and people are feeling like they are saved. Man marrying a man and a woman marrying a woman shacking. Doing what you want to. Committing adultery. Once saved, always saved. You don't even have to repent. That's what they're crying out, teaching. You don't have to repent. Old Cliff Old Dollar got up on the TV and said, You don't have to repent. I don't have to repent. He said, Yeah, y'all heard me right. You don't have to repent when you sin. That old Osteen fell over yonder. They asked him, what are you? Over, over Winford was interviewing. Do you think they're about the homosexuals? Do you think that homosexuals can go to heaven? Well, 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 well. He acts like he's about to have one himself. Didn't stand up for nothing. Got the biggest church in America. You know why? He couldn't afford to say anything. He couldn't afford to call sin, sin. Because he'd empty out that 30,000 member church. Yeah. He probably wouldn't have 10 left if he'd have said what he's supposed to say. Yeah. Strong delusion. Paul said the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils from such turn away. I want you to know the Antichrist has got the airwaves now. The Antichrist has got the radio stations. The Antichrist has got the TV stations. But you know what? The Holy Ghost don't need the TV stations. He don't need the radio air. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost in Azusa Street, they didn't have none of that. They didn't have none of that. But they came from all over the world. The Holy Ghost did all by itself. You say, what we going to do? They ain't going to let us on TV. They ain't going to let us on the radio. We don't need the TV. And we don't need the radio. All we need is the Holy Ghost. All we need is for God to pour out a book of Acts, Holy Ghost revival, and it'll shake the world without TV. It'll shake the world without the radio. Without the internet. Hallelujah. You're going to see. He never needed celebrities like these big TV preachers that get them Hollywood stars put them on the platform to draw crowds that ain't the Holy Ghost drawing crowds that's what's wrong with that it ain't God if you gotta get a movie star to draw crowds you must not know Jesus and the power of this word and the power of the Holy Ghost I'm talking about the original I'm not talking about modern religion a man has done it I'm talking about the book of Acts I'm talking about 
fact of business, there ain't nothing going to deliver this old world. There ain't nothing going to save this world. There ain't nothing going to save America but the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing can save us now. We've gone too far. We're a sodomite nation. We're a nation that's passing laws. It's all right. And the churches are bearing witness. The big TV preachers, the synagogue preachers, they're saying, you can't preach like that no more. They've taken these seminars and teaching them how to be deadhead and antichrist. They ought to call them antichrist seminars because that's what they're teaching. They're not putting in them, go back to the altar. This is original. Terry, Terry, this is, I want to get this over to you. I'm preaching the original. You ain't going to have revival. Revival don't come in a briefcase. It's got to be born on our knees. It's got to be born in prayer. He told him to go back to the city of Jerusalem and tarry. Tarry means away. Lift your hands and praise. Tell him you love him tonight. I said, tell him you love him. Ain't nothing going to save us now but a real Holy Ghost revival. These laws, that old federal judge down in Mobile, she looks like a lesbian herself. Declared the Constitution, the will of the people is the Constitution. California is supposed to be the most liberal state in the Union. They voted down homosexual marriage four times over 80%. But that old federal judge said it's unconstitutional and they shoved it on the people anyhow. Just like they did in Alabama. And Alabama's standing up. That judge, Supreme Judge, Judge Moore, the same one they throw out of the Supreme Court because he wouldn't take his Ten Commandments off the wall. He refused. And they came down at the, the, the federal, the U.S. Marshals came down and threw him out and took the Ten Commandments down. Well, they'll pay for that. I said, they'll pay for that. They kicked him out. The people, we turned around and voted him back in last year. He's back Supreme Judge. And that old Federal judge wrote a law that it was unconstitutional, commanded them all to start marrying men and women. And most of the probate judges closed the windows, fought it. And judge Moore stood up and sent out a command said, Don't marry two men. Don't you marry. He took the load on himself. We need to pray for him. He's fighting it with everything he's got. There ain't nobody in Alabama, one place that's in Mobile where she lives. She made that probate charge, opened his window, all of them closed the window and wouldn't marry nobody. Say, we ain't marrying nobody right now. We ain't marrying man and woman, we ain't marrying two men and two women either. We ain't marrying nobody. Amen. But they're waiting for the Supreme Court. And let me tell you, we need to pray. And if they don't do it, I'm still going to believe God. If they don't stand up and do what they're supposed to be doing up there at that Supreme Court and stop this because the law, all over that Supreme Court, they got the Ten Commandments. They got the law of God. But they've abandoned. That's what our court system used to was, was built on, was the law of God. That's why God, under the Scriptures, said obey the laws of the land. You know, the laws of the land was the Bible then. Now there's some laws of the land I ain't going to obey. 
It was the law of the land in the day of Daniel for him not to pray in 30 days. But he raised his window and prayed in the house. He defied the law of the land. Hallelujah. They threw him in the lion's den. The death sentence was passed on him. And see, it wasn't the will of the king. They tricked him because they're jealous of Daniel. They said, we got to get rid of him because the king said, go get Daniel. Tell Daniel he can do it. He knows how to do it. Tell Daniel. They got jealous because the spirit of God was upon Daniel. The word of God was in him. He was over there in Sin City. He was over there in Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel was of those Jews that was took captive by Nebuchadnezzar and took to Babylon. God ruled and stood up in Babylon. If God can stand up and change the laws, he made them rewrite the law. Because a man wouldn't bend and bow. Because they wouldn't bend and bow. And they said, Daniel. So they threw him. They waited on him. See, they knew he was going to pray. That's when one of them said, if we get anything on Daniel, if we can get rid of Daniel, it's got to be something about his God. So they said, you can't pray for 30 days. And the king signed it, not knowing what he signed. They come and told him that they looked out. They stood and waited at Daniel's to watch him because they knew he's going to raise that window and pray. They believed in Daniel. They believed he's going to raise his window where they could get him. Come prayer time, he's raised his window down on his knees and lifted his hands and began to pray. Oh, we got him. We got him told the king and the king was sorrowful because Daniel was his friend. So he had to he done signed it so they had to throw Daniel in the den didn't they to kill him. He had to keep a, a king couldn't break his word if they do they'd kill him. They threw Daniel in the line then he fasted all night. Pray for Daniel. So about daylight he went out and cried out and said oh Daniel is thy God whom you continually serve? Is he able to deliver you? Oh, Daniel answered him back said, Yes, O king! God has locked the jaws of the lion. And I'm all right. The king said, Get him out, get him out. Bring him up. Get him out there and bring me all those that conspired against him. Let's see whether they're God. Can keep them. They got Daniel out and brought all of them that conspired against him, and they threw him in. They didn't even hit the bottom before the lines and tore him apart. And the king rewrote the law and said, before the meats and the purse, and said, said, I declare that nobody serve no other God but the God of Daniel. Hallelujah. Having a real power of God, real revival can cause the laws to be rewritten. Change the laws. I believe revival is already the fire has been lit. Let's, let's unwaveringly, let's throw ever sing aside. You know, when God begins to move in a new day, in a dawn of a new time, you've got to move with him. And the way you move with him is fall on your knees and empty out. Empty out. Empty out. That's what people always had to do. They had to empty out. And God would pour out his spirit in a new and a fresh way. And he raised up a new crop. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, I don't want to circle and die in this wilderness to you. Waiting on something on our turn. I want to move with God. I want to move with the Holy Ghost. You don't forget the great thing God has done for you. You don't forget the glory and the power. But you always want to feel it again. You always want to see that glory 
when you roll up to the tents and you leave your car running, your lights on, your door open, because something is drawing. Yes. People leave the Bibles and somebody hold the seats all day long, sleep under their tents at night. Hallelujah. Hungry for God. I said hungry. Pray all night. Hear moaning and groaning all night. A move of God was on. Them services would be so powerful. And God's might and God's hand would see, be so powerful upon it. Signs and wonders and miracles. What I'm saying is do it again, Lord. But you know what? He's going to do it like He wants to do it. Don't you think you're going to bring up old things and tie it down and put a name on it because you got pride in it. Or you can prove to somebody I was right. Don't look like many of us has been fully right. What's happened to the glory? Something is wrong. Something has happened. But you know what? He said return to me and I'll return to you. It's revival time. It's time to have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It's time for the dawning of a new day. Hallelujah. We can move on with God. What happens under that denominational spirit, they put a circle around it and what happens, they become stagnated. Collecting spirits. No love for one another. Nobody ain't God but us. And you turn into an old hard-hearted. Same thing them old Pentecostals. You could smell them when they walk in a restaurant from behind you. They had it and nobody else did. So hard and so hard-hearted with no mercy on nobody. No love. Just an old killer spirit. If you don't believe like I believe... You, ain't, you don't know God. Let me tell you that a lot of folks. I remember I got saved in the Baptist church. Probably some folks just say, no, you didn't get saved. Well, I'm still going on. I did turn my heart to God. I repented and I went on and got the Holy Ghost in the little army tent in the woods. And I went on to free wholeness and my heart kept pulling. I went on to the assembly of God and still wasn't satisfied. Even though we prayed all night, cast out devils. But it hadn't died out completely then. There was a few people still praying. You know, where people are praying, turn to Jesus, God will move. Where they drop the nominal spirits and pray. I don't care what's on the name out there. Where folks really seek God, God hears prayer. Hears and answers prayer. How many believes that? Yeah. I said, how many believes that? Yeah. You know, when, when, when over that Susan Street started, it started to, he started praying, Brother Lee did, Brother Seymour came, they threw him out of the churches. Brother Lee was already praying in the basement. He was a janitor of the bank and he was praying to go aside. Peter and John appeared to him, speaking in tongues. He went back and told Brother Seymour, what you're preaching is right. And they started praying in his house and then they moved to a Baptist woman's house. Probably most time and most people this day and time said, nah, God ain't gonna move it to no Baptist woman's house, but he did. He moved it where he wanted to move it. That's what I'm telling you. And right there, six people got the Holy Ghost at once. The next morning, you couldn't get nowhere near that house. Three solid days, 24 hours a day. The Holy Ghost was poured out. Everybody came through that Baptist woman's, Sister Allen was her name, through that Baptist woman's doors, got the Holy Ghost. Then it moved to Susan Street, and for three solid years, 24 hours a day, every kind of miracle, sign, and wonder, and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, people came from all over the world because they heard about an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Folks, we just let God do it. Just follow Him. 
Just get on our knees and empty out and let him come. Like a mighty rushing wind. That's what came on the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost was fully calm. There come a sound from heaven. Oh, you might... Some people say, well, it's too late. It ain't too late for nobody. Moses was 80 years old. When he started his ministry, when he come down and faced Pharaoh, he didn't come with a trained army. He didn't come with an army, he come with a stick. But he had a word from God. I said he stood before the most powerful man in the most powerful army in the world with a stick in his hand because God sent him. Don't think how God's going to do it. God can do it. He can do it. He can do it. And you don't have to have me and you to do it either. But I want him to have me. What about you? I want him to use me. I want to be a part. I believe it. I believe it's a day of restoration. I believe in a time of Holy Ghost revival. Turn it loose, people. Turn religion to loose. Turn. Drop it. Go back to the altar like you did when you first came. You come free. You come loose. You drop what you knew and you came. And you heard something you never heard. You felt glory you never felt. You saw miracles you never saw. That was revival. That was God raising up a people again. And now we're at that door. And that time again, we've got to have revival. To save us. To save us. We've got to have revival. But we have to move on with God. We have to move with God. You know, they, they saw all the miracles came through the Red Sea. Fire by night and a cloud by day. Right out there. With that fire by night and cloud by day, they started grumbling and circling and doubting. Would to God we'd have stayed in Egypt. Would to God we'd have stayed in Egypt. Oh, they did have watermelons and cucumbers. They backslid in their hearts. They didn't actually go back to Egypt, but they backslid in their hearts. Him knows you'd sit right in church and backslide in your heart. And die sitting on them seats. Listening to the word ever service. Being a hearer and not a doer. A hearer, not a doer, is like a man goes to a mirror. You look in that mirror, and you may not like what you see, but that's you. Ham has ever looked in the mirror and said, Ooh, you got to do something with yourself. How many can say amen? You got to do something with yourself. And then you work on yourself. Then you look back again, you say, oh, that's better. That's better. But the Word of God is a mirror. It'll show you it won't lie. The mirror don't lie. The preacher's a lie, but the Word of God don't lie. If you got a lying preacher, you better get out of under him. Better quit listening to him. That mirror don't lie. And this is God's mirror. It'll show you just where you are. Where your slackness is. It'll show you what you need to do to get back to God. It's got all this in it. This is a mirror. But you can walk out of that door. This door. Having seen yourself in the word. Having heard God talk to you. Having seen yourself so plainly. And admit it in your heart. This is me God. And walk out and forget what you saw. That's a hearer and not a doer. He that hears these sayings of mine and do them. I like him to a man that dug down deep. Built his house on the rock. Storms come, the wind blew, and the house didn't even shake. It stood. The storm didn't take it out. You hear me? You better get back. On the lamb, you better get back on that rock. Don't the storm's gonna take you out. What we're facing, let me tell you, you're gonna have to be up with God. You're gonna be where you when they line you up with a chop block or with a guillotine, and they say deny Jesus. 
you're going to have to have a real thing. The baby say, take it off. Take it. I will not deny my Lord. But I believe if you're seeking God and you're going after him with all your heart, and that day come, God will give you grace to lay your head in that guillotine or that chop block. A line up in the firing squad and say, I will not deny. Do what you got to do. I will not deny, my Lord. It's coming. He that heareth these sins of mine and don't do them. Being a hearer not to do them. He said, I like to a man that goes out, builds his house on the sand. Storm comes, the wind blew, and the house fell. It didn't stand the storm. And great was the fall. There. I want to make it, don't you? How many wants to make it? Lift your hands and say, God, I want to make it. Jesus. Lord, I don't want to die here. I want to see your glory. It's not God's will that any of us should die. It wasn't God's will that the children of Israel would die in the wilderness. Three and a half million come out and only two of them remain. Joshua and Caleb. But God's word still come to pass. He raised up their children. And they went in. And possessed what their mamas and daddies could have had. I don't want my children to have what I could have had. I want to pass it on to them what I did have. That I didn't miss it. I didn't circle the wilderness and die. I went on with God. I went on. And always preach that live stream. Keeping in touch with God. Staying on fire for God. Always fasting often and praying. And you know they have a spirit of prayer. You line up. I've seen people line up over and over and over. Same people wanting a spirit of prayer. And I've told them, you ain't going to have no spirit of prayer unless you pray. God can touch you and give you a spirit of prayer, but you've got to use it to keep it. And to keep a spirit of fasting, you've got to fast. Don't you be one of those that lined up every month for a spirit of fasting. All you've got to do is keep it by fasting. Same thing with a reading spirit. You know, sometimes you got to read through like you pray through. Just got to keep on reading till it opens up. Got to keep on till you get through. And then it starts flowing. But you slack off for a week. Start back that next week and you're down and out again. You got to pray. You got to read through again. But you'll keep up the reading. You'll keep up the spirit of reading. And the spirit of revelation. And understanding. You'll always have the flow of God. You'll never die. You'll not be one of those that die in the wilderness. You'll be one of them that go on in to the land of Canaan and see the fullness of God. Somebody is going to see the fullness of Jesus. It still stands. Paul said that we might know him in the height and the depths and the width that we might know him in all of the fullness of God. There's going to be a people it's going to walk. He said in Romans 8 and 29, whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate. We could come in the image of his dear son that he might be the firstborn. Talking about Jesus. Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. Behold what man of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. And those you gotta, you can't hold on to the old. You gotta move on to the new. There are new things fixed to take place. 
and it ain't putting down nothing. It ain't putting down Zuda Street. Thank God, I, the glory and the power of God that God did, and on in the 40s and on in, 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 in our day, ain't trying to take nothing away. I'm just saying we got to move on to revival. And the way you move on, you come back to prayer like they did in early 1900s, like they did in the 40s, like we did in the late 60s and 70s. And right now, 2015, the same thing that birth revivals tarry until you be endued. Wait. Don't you leave Jerusalem. You wait. And that's what happened to Topeka, Kansas in 1915. Hundred. They had a prayer towel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They took three hour shifts and they prayed 24 hours a day. And that's where that revival was born. They moved to Galveston, Houston, and on to Los Angeles, the great Zuzer Street revival. Hallelujah. God's going to do it again. God's going to do it again. He's going to do it through and for somebody. He may not do it through the one he wants to, but he's going to do it through somebody. He'll always have somebody that wants it. He'll always have somebody that's crying. That folks crying out, them folks in China, asking the preachers to preach 12 hours a day with a nonstop. Will you come back tomorrow? Will you come back tomorrow? so hungry for God then the man realized they didn't even have no Bibles they were so hungry for God hallelujah I said hallelujah thank you Jesus God stir up that hunger in us again lift your hands and God stir this hunger in me again stir it in me again Lord stir it in me again Lord you can put on you can put on and act like you got something. But you know, you might as well to admit what you need. David was a man that never did put on. <laughs> man, he told it just like it was. And you know what? He always got delivered. He always got help. Hallelujah! He always recognized where his help come from. He wasn't afraid to repent. He wasn't afraid to tell his sin. But he also told where God helped him every time. Lift your hands up in praise. Tell the Lord you love him tonight. I said, tell the Lord you love him tonight. You know, some folks are going to, ain't going to listen. They're going to circle and die. And I ain't going to stay back here and circle and die with you. I appreciate everything God done for me. And I'll be forever grateful. To everything God's done for me throughout the years. I'm out of a Baptist church into a tree holders in the assembly of God. And that's where God acquainted me with this ministry. And I, it, I had a dream. I was carrying Brother Terrell through a swamp. And I came, he was on my back. And I come through it and I woke up and I said, God, what? What, are you, what am I doing? He said, you're going to carry this message. You're going to carry this message. And God dealt with me. Showed me vision since I was three years old. He'd move on and I'd go and crawl out in the old smokehouse. We had the kitchen away from the house. An old safe where mama throwed all the scraps. Back then you didn't throw away nothing. You kept everything to make quilt tops and patches on our clothes. And some of you may remember that. I'd climb up and pray for hours. Mama would be looking for me. I'd finally wake up and come out. And she said, boy, where have you been? I said, Mama, that happened to me again. And she'd just look at me strange and walk away. Three years old. Never, God never turned me loose. I tried to get it loose. Went to the Marines and went into the war. Come back and tried to get it loose. Thank God he didn't turn me loose. 23 years old. You know, Baptist church I was growing up in. Sitting back on the back row, God spoke to me. 
Don't even remember what the preacher preached. He wasn't too fiery. That one wasn't. But they had some fire ones. They, you felt like you'd going to hell before they got through. It made you fear and live right. And those hell ain't preached. Hell is just about a thing of the past. Ain't hardly any messages on hell anymore. And them old Baptist preachers would preach hell so hot. You see a dark cloud coming up. You think it's it. He's coming today. Or you get to crying out to God. God don't want to go to hell. I feared hell all of my life. Tried to run. But God wouldn't let me loose. Thank God he didn't. That morning at Baptist church, he said, if you don't get up and go today, I thought, well, they got one more stanza. Maybe I can make it out of this. And I was so under conviction. And the Lord spoke, said, if you don't go today, I'll never deal with you again. Like my dad was sitting back about that second, third row there on that side. And I came down, I heard him throw both hands up and he screamed. My boys come home, my boys come home. Right there in that Baptist church, God changed me that day and I went on. Got the Holy Ghost in an army tent under holiness preaching. But you know, I still ain't stopped. There's still greater things in God. Started out in that little Baptist church, but I went through a lot of sex of religion that, that in my growth, just moving on, just getting hunger for God. And tonight I'm still hungry. I still ain't satisfied. <laughs> Hallelujah! I feel like I've been a part of the greatest thing on earth and it, at its time. But you know what? There's something in my heart tonight. I'm still hungry for more. There's still a greater revival coming. There's still a greater move of God coming. God don't stop with us. He's God. He can do it with us or he can do it without us. But I promise you, he's going to do this word. This Bible's going to be fulfilled. I just want to be a part of it. I want to see that glory again, don't you? How many wants to see that glory again? It's dwindled away, folks. You might as well admit it. That glory and power is dwindled away. Many of our churches have died. Just about totally dead. Used to be on fire for God. Run to our shout. But now it's just. Just about gone. I ain't satisfied with that. I ain't never been satisfied with dead religion or dead church, wherever it's at. I believe God's got more for us. Don't you? I believe this book is still right. I believe Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Stand on your feet with me and lift your hands to God. I said, stand on your feet and lift your hands to him. Oh, lift your hands and me. tell him, say, Jesus, I want to be a part of what you're fixing to do. Grab a hold, people. Grab a hold. Grab a hold. Don't hold back. Grab a hold to Jesus. Grab a hold to the horns of the altar. Return to your prayer life. Return to your fasting. If you don't grab a hold and go on, you're going to die. But God's going to raise up your children. He's going to raise up out of the streets and the highways, the harlots and the drunks and the drug addicts. They're coming. They're coming with the scores. They're coming with the literally thousands out of the highways and the hedges. Oh, there's revival. And the fire has been lit. He said, don't you despise the day of small things. Don't despise the day. Jesus was in a manger. Jesus was a baby. Oh, but he come back in the first chapter of Revelation and said, I'm Alpha. I'm Omega. I'm the first, the last. I'm he that was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Got the keys to death and the grave. Oh, lift your hand and say, God, I want to be a part of it. 
Jesus. Grab a hold, people. Grab a hold and get to praying and God will resurrect you. Let this word fall in your heart. Grab a hold of God and get to praying and God will resurrect you. God will make you alive again. God will give you a fresh anointing. That glory we will turn back. You know what he told Joshua? He said, Joshua, he said, tomorrow I'm going to magnify you before the people. God's getting ready to magnify people in this hour to the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Oh, we're going to see his glory again. We're going to see the fire again. Signs and wonders and miracles. And the dead's going to be raised in multitudes. Thousands are coming. Oh, hallelujah. If thou canest believe all things are possible, stretch your hands out and release your faith tonight. Stretch your hands out and release your faith. Release your faith. Release your faith tonight. Hallelujah. Release your faith. Hallelujah. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Jack yourself up and move on with God. Move on with the Holy Ghost. Move on to this day of revival. Move on into what God is getting ready to do on the face of the earth. Don't sit here and die. You know what they did? Not taking anything, God forbid I touch God's ark. Brother Branham, after he died, they stayed around there looking for him to be raised. I'm not saying God can't raise the dead, but you know, right up there in Indiana, they still gathered around his church, listened to tapes, saying he was a last prophet. There ain't no last to God. God don't die with man. Do y'all hear me? Just like they did over yonder. In Brother Allen's place. They, they stayed there waiting. Hoping he'd be raised up. Nobody could do it but Brother Allen. But it wasn't Brother Allen. It wasn't Brother Branham. It was the Holy Ghost. It was Jesus. And when men get their eyes off of Jesus and get it on men, the glory starts departing. Because you know what he said? I will not give my glory to another. He also said, Corinthians said, not many wise men, not many noble men after the flesh are called. You don't cho choose many congressmen and presidents, celebrities and movie stars because people would come to hear that movie star and not Jesus. Not many wise men, not many noble men are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world. And the things that are not to bring to naught things that are. Why, Lord? He said, I did this because no flesh shall glory in my presence. God ain't going to allow no flesh to glory in his presence. He'll bring it down. He'll bring a man down. He'll bring a woman down. He'll bring a minister down. When you start glowing in flesh, you are short-lived with the glory of God. If you don't keep Jesus lifted up, the revival spirit will die. The glory will depart like it did in the Bible. But Eli, when his sons, they was committing adultery in the doors of the tabernacle with the women and taking the flesh hooks. They was allowed to get some meat, but they was digging too deep, taking more than they should have been taking. Man come in with dirt on his head. Eli said, what about my sons? 
He was in battle, said, Hoffman and Phineas, he said, they're dead. He fell backwards and broke his neck. Eli did. But you know, before that, the Bible said, in those days, the lamp of God had gone out in the house of God, and the word of God was precious. See, God had commanded them 24 hours a day to get pure olive oil and keep the lamp going in the house of God. That represented life and light. But Eli had backslid. And somehow they'd quit going out getting olive oil and the lamp had gone out in the house of God. You hear me? The lamp has gone out in most houses of God. The life and the spirit and the joy and the shout and the praise. And he said the lamp had gone out in those days and the word of God was precious. Amos said that there'd be a famine in the land not for bread and water but for hearing the word of God. There's a famine in the land for hearing the pure, unadulterated old King James Version. Holy Ghost anointed preaching. There's a fame. And his daughter-in-law, one of his daughter-in-laws was a child. She went into labor and had that child and they named his name Inkabog, which meaning the glory had departed. The glory. Now friend, if you've ever been in the glory, you know when you're not in the glory. You can pretend all you want. You can shake it. You can dance it. You can play the loud, loud music. You can say, oh, the Holy Ghost moved today, but if the Holy Ghost didn't move, it was you. The lamp had gone out. The glory of the Lord had departed. And Ichabod was written on the door. All across America, Ichabod. The glory has departed. But God is saying, how revival. I'm pouring out revival. Return to me. Come back. It's time for Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. One of the most devastating things, there ain't nothing no colder. There ain't nothing no colder than a bed of ashes where fire used to be. I said, there's nothing no colder than a bed of ashes where a fire used to be. But how many knows he'll restore us? He'll give us back. He'll restore the years. He's going to restore the years that the devil has stole from us, the canker worm, the caliper, and the palmer worm. Lift your hands to him tonight. Or lift your hands and tell him, Jesus, I appreciate you. Hallelujah. It's me again, Lord. I got a prayer. Needs an answer. It's me again, Lord. Got a problem I can't solve. Oh, I don't mean to worry you. Here I am facing something new. I need help that only comes from you. It's me again, Lord. Oh, troubles come and I can't find an answer. Oh, lonely nights I spend in agony. Oh, but you're the only one I can turn to. Yes, he is. So here I am, Lord, on my bending knees. It's me again, Lord. Got a prayer, needs an answer. Oh, it's me again, Lord. I got a problem I can't solve. Oh, I don't mean to worry you. Here I am 
I'm facing something new. I need help that only come from you. It's me again, Lord. Oh, I know you're mighty busy in your heaven. Oh, saving souls and making the stars to shine. Oh, but you promised if I'd ask it, I'd receive it. Oh, here I am, Lord, asking one more time. Help me sing it. It's me again, Lord. I got a prayer. Come on and sing it with me. It's me again. from you it's me again Lord come on and praise him hallelujah thank you Jesus praise God hallelujah tell him you need him tonight oh I don't mean to worry you but here I am facing something new. I need help that all that come from you. It's me again, Lord. Troubles come and I can't find an answer. Oh, lonely nights I spend in agony. But you promise if I'd ask it, I'd receive it. So here I am, Lord, asking one more time. It's me again, Lord. I got a prayer, needs an answer. It's me again, Lord. I got a problem. I can't solve. Oh, I don't mean to worry you. Satan, something new. I need help that only comes from you. It's me again, Lord. Put your hands together and just praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and give him praise tonight. Come on and glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, I praise you tonight. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Master. Thank God. Thank God. I'm going to give you a chance tonight to help. You shall see and know that I've spoken. For soon it shall rise. I'll shake the world. All men shall know that I'm God. I'll turn the tensions of the people back upon me, saith the Lord. And I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And you'll behold my glory with signs, wonders, and miracles. I call you unto myself. I call you unto me. Return to me, saith the Lord. For this is an hour of visitation. And I'll pour out of my spirit. In these last days, didn't I? I promise that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And you shall behold my glory. And you'll see my power. 
And the great signs and wonders shall return to my people. And you shall go forth in the power of the Holy Ghost. And the gifts of the Spirit shall be awakened and revived. And you'll know that I've sent an outpouring of my Spirit. For no time like these times shall be. For I will pour out my glory. And the world shall behold the brightness of my glory. They'll come from the east and the west and they'll join. And you'll know that I've spoken this night. That revival fires is at hand. You'll see it. But it's up to you, said the Lord, to be a part of it. Don't be like the man that saw it, but didn't need of it and partake of it. Because you didn't believe the word of the Lord that I sent. This is the day of my visitation. Hearken this night and know that I'm the Lord and I shall surely bring to pass revival that shall shake America for America is worth saving and I will save America said the Lord thank you Jesus that's the said the Lord Lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lift your hands as a sign to you. I'm seeing a preacher in this, this area around. It's going to suddenly pass. It won't be judgment, it just it's just gonna pass and be a sign. That God has spoke to you here. Thank you, Jesus. Lord bless this offering. Don't let one fail you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to the people, don't let one fail you. Stand and bring your best.